Hey, hello, this is Brandon Berman, and this is a introduction to sound in Premiere. So on the timeline, what I have here is this uh, clip on top. Notice as soon as I double click it, it shows up here in the source area. And we're actually seeing the audio because that's where I was just looking. But I'm going to toggle that back to video for now. Okay, and um, when I scrub, I can see over here in the monitor that there's audio that's being you know, indicated. And then this guy down here is actually a second audio of the same piece. So when this is recorded, this was the, the audio that was recorded from the camera, and this is the audio that was recorded from a second recording system, a microphone. Um, so if we just take a quick listen to this, and what we're going to do is fix this up later, but uh, just so you can hear the differences before I turn it off. Um, if we toggle the track output, if I just listen to the one that was by the camera, it sounds like this. The school piece, and I would be allowed for a few days, on and off. But in the final year of high school... Uh, okay, sounds all right. And listen to it, this recording. In the final year of um, high school, um, 1984. I bet you can hear the difference. The camera one has got a lot of ambient noise, and, and uh, the second recording one's much better. So we'd want to sync this up, and I'm going to talk about how I sync this up. But for now, let's just not concentrate on this audio. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the audio there and lock this track so that we don't mess with it. And we'll turn on the audio track with the one we're going to mess with here. Okay, so first thing you notice is that you can see over here the levels. And they go up to zero. See, so audio goes up to zero. When it goes louder than zero, actually we can get digital distortion, which can cause problems and uh, cracking and popping and stuff like that can happen. So um, we can stretch this if you wanted to view it a different way. We could pull this out and you can see that it takes a horizontal nah. approach. Yes, I look directed to the camera. Nah, okay. don't, not necessarily. So I'll put this back the way it was. And then also, if we wanted to see this better, our audio, we can also just change our timeline. We can, and the reason that I'm seeing these waveforms, by the way, is that um, I have this right here, set display style, and I have show waveforms set. If I do just names only, then we don't see the waveforms. Um, this takes less processing power, but um, if we're working with audio, we're going to want to see that. So show waveforms. And then this shows. Uh, uh, keyframes. Show the show keyframes is what's set by default and that'll show us the keyframe as we start to change the audio here. Um, and show clip volume that's showing us the volume right here but we don't actually see the, the keyframes here when we create those. And if we chose high keyframes then we don't have any way at all really to control this audio from the timeline and show track keyframes and volume have to do with when we work with a mixer and we actually change the overall uh, track uh, changes. So if we make a change to the clip, then we move the clip, then those changes will go along with the clip. But if you do something to the track, then that'll just stay there. And so anything that any audio that's put there will uh, receive it, that uh, information. So you can think about it as you edit down your clips and then you do a big master mix with all of your tracks. Right here, I can do a control click or a command click. That's a quick way to get a keyframe. There's another one, and another one, and another one. I made four right there. And if I lift this up like so, and this one, this is ramping up. So the audio will ramp up here, get louder, and then it will get quieter here. And so we can watch that with our monitor and hear it as well. And, uh, I went to school I think it's louder. in 1973. Uh, in a primary school called uh, Achiraka Primary School. But, uh... And there we go. And you see that line that stays up here. That's indicating, uh, the yellow line is indicating our top peak. Um, but you can uh, see that I was able to it. change the volume here to go up and down. And so you can, ramp, you can just easily do this on your own. Um, you can also use the pen tool right here. And you can add points to that and you can these are like Bezier curves so you can also uh, change the way these points work.
So right there I just held down the command key or control key and that converted it. And then I have anchor points. Now I can really adjust this audio just the way I want to here. And again, to do that again, I'm holding down the command or control key and that converts that linear Bezier air curve to a, a linear from a linear point to a Bezier air curve. There we go. Now they're going up and down. Okay. Um, now if I wanted to clear all these out, um, what I'm going to do is open this up in the effects window. But I think it's about time that we switch the way that we're viewing. Right now I've been viewing in the editing mode. And if I go to Window, Workspace, Audio, then we can switch to a way that's easier for us to work with audio. And you can see that the audio meter is, the mixer is right here, and the source and the effects controller are right here. So I'm going to use the V to get my regular selection tool, double click our audio, that brings it up in our source window. And our effects control panel is right next to it. And you can see here's where the volume was set. Although we were working in the timeline, that is being tracked up here in the effects control. If I drop down the volume, you can see where the keyframes were made. And um, we're changing the audio right there. You can see it. We can also pan, so we can uh, uh, move from the left, left speaker to the right speaker, so you can animate that uh, with keyframes as well. And uh, channel mixer, so if I wanted to just make the left volume go up and the, vo the right volume go down, uh, stay the same, you can affect those too. And notice as soon as I make a change, a keyframe is made. And then as you move out in time, you can make a change. And now I've uh, changed those, so it's getting louder and quieter on there. Um, and again, you could just pan. You could start by panning this all the way from one side and then moving to another side where you pan it the other way. And that's just going to make this go from the left speaker to center speaker to right speaker. Now to reset all of this stuff, um, you can go to wherever there are keyframes like this, hit the stopwatch, and this action is going to delete the keyframes. So if I say OK, then I'm basically resetting everything back to the way it was before. Now that I do that, everything has been reset. Okay, so there's some uh, things that you can change in the effects control that are by default. If you add effects, um, over here, audio effects, you can just grab whatever you want. And as soon as I apply it, you'll see it show up. Dehummer right here. And each uh, effect has different sort of controls that you work with. And you can add multiple I'm going to add a flanger as well, and I can drag it straight over to here as well. And there's our flanger. And I can affect its, the way it sounds. And there's a lot that you can do with these. As you can see, this really isn't good for an interview. What I've been doing is just been messing with it. Select and delete effects. So if I just simply select the flanger, hit the delete button, that's gone. Same thing here and there. And now I've basically gotten us back to the way we were before. All right, let's look at creating a merge clip. So I'm going to create a sync between these two clips. And so if I click on this one and control click on it, or right click on it, I can go to Reveal in Project. And that shows me the file right here in the project. If I double click on that, I've loaded it up into my source window and I want to set an endpoint right at the clap. So here it is, uh, and I know that it's right about this spot that the clap happens here. There it is. So I'm going to zoom in and see exactly where I want to put that endpoint. So getting right to the clap. Zoom in on it, and there we are. Okay, so since we're frame by frame, I'm going to choose this frame that's right as the clap is starting. And I'm going to hit the letter I on the keyboard, and then I'm going to load up the other clip, and I'm going to set an endpoint based upon its audio as well. And so if I look right about there, there's the clap that I want. I hit I. That sets an endpoint. Now I select both of these clips and I'm going to control click on them or right click 
and I can do a make or sorry excuse me I can do a merge clips so if I merge clips here are my options uh, synchronize point do I want to synchronize by the endpoint, out point, or time code. Now, if you had shot your audio and video and they were using the same time code, you could use this. Uh, but we just set the endpoint, which should work for us. And then, um, as far as our audio, um, we could use the audio time code, which is fine. Uh, or here, we can remove the audio from the clip. Let's not check that this time. So if I click OK, we get a brand new file up here and uh, when I double click to see it in the source and change that little wrench to the wave I can see that we've got quite a few channels so basically what's happened is that it's combined those two and we haven't thrown anything out so that's an exactly what I was looking to do so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and um, select them both again and I select the first one hold the shift key down, select both, control click and we will say merge clips this time we'll choose to remove the audio from the AV clip, so from the camera clip so we click OK here and now uh, we double click to see it in the viewer and it looks like it just took the audio that we wanted so I'll bring it down to the timeline And here is our audio. Uh, the eye green to take me to the university. So, so uh, uh, I, I stopped there. And okay, the next thing that we'll take a look at is creating a mix down. Okay, here we're looking at two sequences. One of them, uh, this first one, Richard at the Pool, is a bunch of stuff, uh, including music, um, background sounds, and some principal audio of Richard talking and I haven't done anything to it so let's just see how it plays out as you can hear everything is competing um, we've got all of these, you know, pretty much just going at full blast here. So let's go to this next sequence where I did some work on it. And here's that same sequence again. I am Richard Chalo. I am the swimming coach. And also the karate instructor. Ah, that's cool. Okay, we have much better going on there. And if you were watching the mixer, you'd notice that uh, some of our, our tracks, which I have actually labeled, here are audio tracks. And you can see that underwater, underwater, it's the steady splash. Here's the music track, the principal audio, which is him speaking. So um, I've done some work to that. Uh, here's the uh, outline for a process, and that is to edit uh, the audio to the timeline so just bring it down like I've got it here and then uh, trim the audio so you know changing just working with each individual clips add transitions you might want to ramp up or ramp down some audio and then add any effects that you're going to add in there and then mix the whole thing together using this mixer which is what we're going to talk about here in a minute um, but you'll notice that what I basically did is I set the uh, underwater the sound effects and the music way down and kept my principal audio up and here are some general rules about that and that is that principal audio could be between negative 6 and negative 12 and sound effects between negative 18 and, and neg negative 12 and negative 18 and background also quiet as well neg negative 18 this all depends of course on your sound effects whether it's a gun firing or just a dropping of a pin or you know your principal audio could be a person who has a really booming voice or someone who has a really soft voice so these are all just kind of things to get you started uh, but the idea is to keep the complete mix below you know around negative three to negative six so here you can see in mine if we take a if we start to zoom in a little bit and take a look at what I've done with this one you can see here that I did a fair number of clip changes right here 
I did that just by bringing out the pen tool. I hit the letter P here, and then you can click and drag down to add a ramp in. This could blend this a lot better. So I was bringing down some audio and up uh, just as I needed it. And that was one of the most important things I needed to do on a clip level. And then also uh, placing them exactly where I wanted them. Then the next thing I, I wanted to do is really look at you know, my overall track volumes. And that's what's controlled here. And so I made the principle a lot louder. And then I started to tweak these guys. So that's where I met with it. I can definitely do more improving to get this even better sounding. But you can definitely see the difference between doing no mixing and this mixing. So let's go back to the start one and uh, look at how I did some of this stuff. All right. I'm going to use the Z key to zoom in and look at our program here. Here we go. So when we play, I can automatically just change the overall track volumes if I wanted to. Um, so for example, if this audio uh, right here is too loud, this unit uh, audio 6 right here, uh, excuse me, audio 4, I can change that even here to music. See, so it's another way to just kind of help and I can just drag the overall level down. Now, we're not really seeing this happen, but let me go ahead and drop this down. And if you recall, the show keyframes, if you click that and you choose show track keyframes, then, um, then we're going to be able to change this. And you'll see the line is going up and down. So here I have it all the way down. And here I have it all the way up. And you can see that the line is changing all the way across. So if you want to bring down music or bring down certain ones, you're able to do that right here, and that changes it on the track. Now, if I wanted to get into the details here, I could also use my pen tool. So I'm using the pen tool here, and if I ramp this, if I just do something here, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if I just made this go quiet and then it gets loud, this change is not happening on the clip level it's actually on the track. So if I got rid of this audio and put a different audio piece in here, that audio would also ramp down. Or if I was to slide this music, then uh, if I was able to, excuse me, if I was to slip this music, then the same thing would be applied right here at the track, not at the clips. When we do something like this and apply it at the clip level, like for example here, now this will is attached to the clips, and when I move my clip around, then these keyframes come with the clip. But when we're working with track volume, as you can see here, those stay with the track. So that's what I, those are the things that I messed with the most in order to create the mix down and just went through listening to them. Um, one thing that's good to know is these keys right here, mute, solo, and enable for track recording. So if I just want to hear the music track, then I can solo it. So if I hit this, I'm soloing it and only listening to that track, as you can hear. And you can hear it go down because I had, we had made that track volume go down. Um, I can also mute a certain track. So here I will mute the audio track. And we are hearing all the other tracks, but not that track. You can mute multiple tracks or you can solo multiple tracks, but these are, this is a very helpful way to sort of isolate sounds and listen to them and decide you know, what's going to work and what's not. Okay, and uh, here's another little nifty little feature, and that is that we can select a track. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just select track 4 and make that one. So let's see, yes, track, yeah, let's do, let's just do track 1 and we'll make that a recordable track. So we turn on the record here, and then I come down to this to record, and then when I hit the play button, we will actually start to record where the playhead is. So I'll do a quick test here. Turn down my volume first. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And as you can see, here it is. It is shown up on the audio one. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And there we go. And now I can adjust my microphone to get a better volume, but that's a quick way to lay down a voiceover uh, or just notes for yourself. Okay, and then last thing I want to look at here, I'm going to disable the recording, is uh, how we can change the track 
levels uh, on the fly. So let's use the, um, we'll focus on the audio track right here. So this audio track, the music track, and I'm going to solo that track right there so we're not bothered by the other music and you'll, you'll see. Um, but then instead of read here, I'll go ahead and say write. And so I'm going to bring it to the beginning and I'm going to change this to write. And then as I play, I'm going to go ahead and move this slider down. So I'll go ahead and start the play with my space bar. And I'm bringing it down. Up. Little craziness in here. Up and down. And I'll stop. And what you can see is that all of the keyframes for the track have been laid down here. Okay, so that's a, that's a great way if you like to do this type of mixing on the fly, that's a, one option you might want to look into. So that concludes this video about audio. And let me know if you have any questions. Check out the website, brandonberman.com, and have a great day.